I'm going to talk very little about your long profile, um, and then you s the rule still applies. Tell us something which is not on the profile, beginning with Keith. Uh, Keith Bergelt is the chief executive. I think executive. my profile's so long that I, you know, <laughs> how could there be anything else? Biking? Yeah. We could tell you things. I have, uh, I have 16 uh, bikes profile, in my garage. Yeah. Is that, I have 34 watches. Good for you. I don't know. Are how those many interesting shoes? things? How many pairs of shoes? Pairs of shoes? I don't know. 40? 169 <laughs> shirts, dress shirts? <laughs> More information than you want. <laughs> Almost. Well, he is the chief executive officer of Open Invention Network. And um, for those of you who do not know Open Invention Network, um, please look it up. It is the most important thing. <laughs> uh, Nicola Schifano. And uh, Nicola, you want to start before I read it? Or otherwise, I can say he's the senior director, cloud and IP policy and strategy at Microsoft. Yeah, Thank you, Michi. You want to have a, a personal information? Yes. Uh, all right. I, um, so one thing that is not in my profile is that I make great cocktails and I'm passionate about you know what makes a good margarita. <laughs> and I'm happy to take a bet that no one is having great margaritas in the U.S. Uh, and we don't and we don't allow foie gras in New York City anymore either. Well, so soon, please. but anyway. And the interesting, the disclosure of great margaritas is the, it's actually difficult to find on the net. Happy to share when you have time. Well, if you were not leaving uh, in the middle of this panel, then we would have asked you that uh, to judge the margaritas at the bar tonight. Um, and uh, Karen Copenhaver, uh, who already was in the panel, and Eben, you've been hearing. Well, we're going to now talk today, and this is going to be a shorter panel than earlier scheduled. This is about patent defense for free and open source software, the next steps. Um, last year, we here talked about the new consensus negotiated with the able diplomacy of several people, uh, especially Keith, um, and who said that open source is inevitable for companies who want to compete effectively in a hyper-competitive world and participate in models that are really essential to deliver what your customers really want. And um, Evan said that no matter whether everybody takes an OIN license, there are few hard bitten naysayers out there, and it should make no difference to every individual who's learning how to program and who wants to put some of her code into something that other people use. And he wants to believe that uh, the state of complete peace for individual developers and nonprofit projects around the world uh, uh, would continue. Um, I'm just going to ask uh, for Keith and Nicola, maybe, who has to leave earlier, uh, to tell us what have you been up to since uh, we last met here? Yeah, um, maybe a few words at a, a high level. I, so a year ago, you know, I've been. Uh, around here to, to discuss the Microsoft joining a lot and then shortly after OIN, becoming licensee of OIN. And I think the, the reason at the time, you know, we discussed the, the importance of, you know, enabling this safe space of innovation uh, with developers to, to um, really unleash the creativity uh, of these people. And I, I think these, these reasons are still valid today. I think the landscape has changed a, a little bit um, there are new considerations. Um, um, I, I think uh, the patent issues are still important. Um, there are still patent issues, but the, you know, when I look around, I, I, I see a lot of um, uh, discussions going on on uh, open source licenses and what are open source licenses, with, as we heard today. I see a lot of um, energy behind uh, other discussions around uh, data, and we, you know, we Microsoft published a couple of the data sharing agreements in July. So, the, from that perspective, you know, it feels like um, while the the conversation on patents remain relevant, um, you know, at, from an operating company perspective and a non-practicing entity perspective, it feels that the the it's we are really at a point where we. we I don't know that patents are the number one issue anymore. I just I think we are past that point, and maybe we have to look at um, other aspects as well. 
I think the, uh, first I'll say that, uh, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say this publicly, that I wouldn't be here without Terry, and Terry, IBM wouldn't be where they are without you, and uh, the my relationship with IBM was really built upon the fact that you had sensitized them and they had made their first famous billion dollar investment in 99. And so we wouldn't have an entity with 3,200 plus licensees that are committing their patent portfolios as, as Microsoft has committed its, its 60,000 strong patent portfolio to patent non-aggression in the core of Linux and open source. And so uh, we all owe you a debt. And uh, just to reinforce the points that were made by, uh, by Evan, um, your civility and, uh, and your uh, ability to advocate without, uh, uh, without uh, running afoul of the, uh, the, high, the high degree of uh, BS detection inside large bureaucratic organization like IBM, I mean, the, it's, no, uh, it's no insignificant accomplishment to be able to move. It's like being a, a frogman on the rudder of the Titanic, being able to move it away from icebergs and move it towards something more relevant to clear, to, toward clean water. Uh, and uh, so it's very significant. And I, I thank you because I've had the best um, you know, 13, 12 year run of my career. Uh, performing the role that I perform because it's rare when you get to do something that um, that will leave a legacy of the type that that I, that I expect OIN will leave. The partnership that we formed, I mean, clearly um, the formation of OIN was predicated on the, the threat that was represented by by Microsoft. We kind of, you know, went through that. We, we now have a uh, uh, we're not just, uh, they're not just an ordinary licensee. There's a there's a sense of uh, cautious intimacy. It's probably a good way of describing it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and it's, you know, it's amazing what's happened. Uh, um, I talked last year, right around the time that the license was signed uh, with Microsoft about uh, the concerns that, that existed around uh, XFAT. And I was uh, <laughs> assured that in the right time, the right moment, that something would be done that would be beneficial to the entire community. And lo and behold, uh, just uh, whatever it was, six weeks ago, uh, there was an important announcement uh, about the, uh, the desire to have it included in the Linux system definition, the encouragement, actually active encouragement of OAN to include it, and the, uh, the provision of the spec. And in, now it's included, I think as of this week, it's included in the in Linus's main line. So um, very important progress that we could have not imagined five years ago uh, ever occurring and transpiring the way it did. And so great kind of sense of momentum. Um, in fact, we had our uh, OAN board meeting hosted by Microsoft uh, in uh, Washington in, uh, in July, um, which we had Nicola and David and, and Eric and a bunch of people from, uh, from Microsoft there. Um, and a very different kind of, you know, beyond rapprochement. It's a, it's a, it's a, a thriving relationship, and we've had other things that I can't really talk about in a, in, a, in a large forum, but that that they have done to recognize the value of and the importance of of they being a licensee along with other companies who are already uh, maybe Microsoft licensees. And so reflecting the value of that relationship in their commercial dealings with other companies has been, a, again, a, a very positive sign. And it's all based on conversations, practicality, and the desire to do what's right. Uh, and so I've been really heartened by that. And we were maybe got uh, the, the positives of, of, the, of a great board meeting and a great board dinner. Um, and lots of Washington State wine. Uh, uh, we even got a commitment from uh, from um, Microsoft to support something that we were uh, we've been noodling over for about a year and a half. And really, uh, about two weeks after I uh, after the announcement of the license, I sat with Jim Zemlin in San Francisco, and we talked about kind of what happens after what comes next. What do we do? How do we do things? To, how can we stay relevant or become more relevant? in kind of a post-Microsoft period where they were part of, of the community. And we talked about non-practicing entities. And OIN had been established to mainly focus on operating company risk, 
on the $100 million we spent on patent acquisition and curation of a portfolio, largely built around on that, that activity. But now we've ultimately come to grips with the fact that we can pivot and maybe put 40 to 60, 40 to 50 percent of our, our effort into non-practicing entity risk uh, to make sure that we can deal with the full spectrum of risk that's out there uh, in a very focused way. Um, and so we are uh, working together with the Linux Foundation as a result of that discussion and many others since, uh, and uh, Microsoft and IBM. And so, who would have thought that that uh, that group would have come together? If you look back, if you looked ahead five years uh, ago, and so um, uh, this is kind of an unprecedented level of cooperation, and it's only deepening the relationships that the relationship that we have, personal and professional. And it takes work to maintain these relationships, but it's it's really come about because companies recognize their interdependencies and the idea of, of how important collaboration is. I think the lawyers collaborating is clearly a mirror of what happens in the technology community. And so uh, I'm quite heartened by everything I see. This relationship, the relationship with the LF has been rock solid for 11 years. Uh, and obviously the relationship with IBM, again, I wouldn't be here but for IBM. And, uh, and the, the community would be lesser but for IBM's contribution to it. Um, Karen, do you want to talk about LF? Well, since I'm just standing in for Mike, I'm, I will just reiterate, Terry, what a joy. <laughs> what a joy it has been um, for all these many years cause, because we were both at IBM. I started at IBM in 1979, so <laughs> it was a long time ago. Uh, but here's the key, is that so much of what happens happens because of individuals, and individuals all you know, placed all over our community, both these people inside companies, it, you know, certainly the developers, the free software community, everyone has a role to play. And if you ever doubt that, that an individual can make a difference, what's the wonderful quote, a small number of individuals, there's nothing else that ever really has made a difference. And so um, I think there are many people in Microsoft that have, were involved in these conversations over a long period of time and built up uh, an enormous amount of trust, both inside and outside the company, and Keith's been a part of that, and uh, I've been you know, proud to play a role in some of that at, uh, at the LF. I think that, that um, was, uh, Max was talking about the really fun part of you know, running these, these. Another fun part is really trying to be as creative in our response to patent concerns as uh, you know, as the developers are in being creative to to re respond to to um, different challenges, because it's not one response; it's many different responses. It's different for different communities. It's, it's um, it is a process of talking through what are the true concerns and doing it in a way that doesn't limit participation because of uh, a lack of certainty about many things, but that brings more people in to commute to uh, to uh, contribute and striking that balance for each community about a assuring the maximum level of commitment and, uh, and, and cooperation without taking an undue risk in terms of, of uh, the, the community being um, held up later by uh, concerns that weren't addressed. It's, it, you know, we could do every project and we could spend five years negotiating a patent piece before the project started and nothing would happen. Uh, that's not the right answer. So striking that balance requires a lot of, of, uh, of trust, cooperation, and creativity. So I think it's another piece of this whole picture that's actually very interesting. And you know, hats off, I mean, how many licensees does OAN have now? I always have 3, to, 3,212 3, licensees. Uh, talking about communities, Keith, do you wanna talk a little bit about Rothschild's patent imaging lawsuit against Gnome Foundation? Uh, sure. This is, uh, and I think we're quite fortunate. Whenever one of these situations arises, uh, we're always a little bit, I think probably because of past history, we're a little bit nervous about the quality of lawyering, the, uh, the way a case is gonna be managed, and the uh, quality of clients. Um, and uh, I talked with Neil McGovern pretty much a day or two after the suit was filed, uh, and uh, 
you know, I think Neil is really level-headed about this. He's listening to council. He's taking contributions. We provide prior art to his council. Uh, Sherman and Sterling uh, has been great, and uh, we've got really lucky because um, one bad thing happens in one place, a good thing happens elsewhere. But there's a nucleus of litigation council that came from Kenyon and Kenyon, which imploded uh, several years ago. And that count, that group of, of uh, lawyers is now managing the, uh, the response and the litigation uh, for, uh, for Gnome Foundation. And so, um, you know, I, I view this as, I look at the patents and don't view them as, as particularly uh, impactful. And so that's a good thing. Um, and that the process is gonna play out. And I think the strategy is a good one if, of wanting to invalidate the patents and send a message. And so, uh, um, you know, it's a, it's a good community uh, of, uh, of people who are working on this. And um, if it weren't, then, you know, we would, we would obviously pitch in uh, financial support and otherwise to make sure that this was managed well. But, but we've been very impressed with council. We talk to council on a somewhat regular basis. As I said, we provide prior art to help them. And we draw it from incredible resources we have in the community of people who just, whenever there's a, there's a litigation, they just, and it really pertains to Linux, Linux, Linux system functionality, a project, whatever it happens to be, they just come out of the woodwork to support. And these are people who are not, um, they haven't made a billion dollars in, in open source. They're people that are uh, unusual, quirky, uh, old line uh, expertise that were, know where the bodies are buried in terms of the Wayback Machine that we all have to use to identify prior art sometimes. And just really talented, thoughtful, com committed people and so whenever this happens, I always you know, feel it reinforces my own beliefs in the, in the quality of the community. And so I think that's one that, while this isn't the reason why we're creating this, this partnership to be able to deal with uh, NPE risk, uh, it further reinforces that that risk is out there. Um, and even if it's an annoyance factor kind of litigation, uh, Rothschild has filed 714 suits in the last uh, six years. Um, 48 of them are around this one set of patents, uh, and there are about six active suits right now on this one set of patents. And so we monitor on a regular basis these kinds of organizations when they have patents that are of or relate to Linux system, Linux kernel functionality. And so, uh, again, the community is working so much better than it, than it was 10 years ago, 11 years ago. Um, I, I, I just want to add again, it would be very difficult for the community to respond um, if it didn't have, you know, Keith in a role in a separate organization to address patent, you know, issues. But one of the great things is that whereas some people think open source might be more vulnerable, it's actually less vulnerable because of all the resources that can be brought to bear. But those resources would not be available if there wasn't a coordination point that didn't bind the individual companies and that could serve as a place for the prior art, et cetera, to, um, uh, uh, let, let's say, re reside in that town. So uh, that makes me feel so, um, so good to know that, um, that we, we can act on that mutual vulnerability and to uh, come to a collaborative defense the way we do collaborative development. <coughs> Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, th I think just want to echo one of the things you said. Uh, you know, we, we hear these, these news and in a way it feels like there is a um, systematic issue that needs to, uh, to be addressed. However, uh, it feels to me that given the, the, the number of software components out there uh, in open source, the, the, the amount of um, use uh, out of these components you know, frankly, we, we, don't, we don't see, I mean, there are issues and they need to be addressed, but that I think it's, um, we should, it should be well understood that these, these are incredibly safe to use, uh, um, in particular from a, a, a patent perspective. So I think it's important to uh, stay focused and address issues as they arise in a uh, thoughtful manner. Uh, I, I think the, the infrastructure that has been built either through the licenses themselves 
or um, um, other mechanisms like OIN and others, I think they have proved their, um, you know, the, the, the efficacy in, in, in you know, ensuring peace, basically, overall. And it makes actually it easier to address issues when they arise in a much more uh, tactical manner because we have all these elements already in place. Thank you. This is uh, everybody getting along and singing Kumbaya together. Uh, this panel was great, and I'm sorry I'm cutting it short now <laughs> because some people have to uh, travel, catch planes, get on calls and trains, but uh, thank you and hope the discussion continues. Um, Evan doesn't get a chance to comment because he does get... <laughs> um, but thank you and a round of applause for our panelists, please.